I need juice. Cranberry or nothing hoes. Keep your vagina clean hoes. <laughs> Actually, this is a very relaxed video. It's not a tutorial. I'm not a beauty guru. I'm just here to show you guys how I do my makeup because a lot of you guys have been asking me. So, I'm here to deliver. So hi snacks, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. This is how I do my makeup like all the time. Uh, the only thing that I'd say has changed from my previous makeup videos is better understanding of my face, better usage of techniques. And also I'm just gonna leave the details for this hair in my description box. I'm always wearing this hair and every time I post a picture on Instagram, you guys ask me about it. <clears throat> Another episode of please ignore my neighbors. They're really loud and annoying. Um. So first step is face. Like that's what I do first, my face makeup, my base. Just get that all set up. So the foundation I use in the shade Almond is this Rimmel one. My goodness, I have never had a foundation that matches me this well. Like this, this is beast. So I just put it on. <laughs> Can you guys see? Okay. To blend my makeup, I use a brush because I just feel that has the best finish on my face. So the first space is... What? <laughs> the first space that I blend out is where I need the most coverage so that I get the most product um, placed in that area. So it's my sides. And that is because I have hormonal breakouts so all of them just are here and that's where i need the most coverage so can you see can you just my goodness this is amazing and then i'll take it like under my eye like once everything here has been blended Then, same thing on the other side. Just spread it in the areas that need it the most before you spread it out. If I feel like I didn't put enough product in these areas that need the coverage, I'll just go on again and put more foundation and then do the same thing. But I feel like I did pretty good. I put a healthy amount. Or maybe my skin is just getting better. Who knows? <laughs> So I'm just going to carry on blending out the rest of my face. So I use the swirling in order to spread the product out more. And then I use this in order to keep the product in a centered focused place. Me, a scientist. This, this foundation is honestly so good. I don't know why I never paid attention to Rimmel. I think Rimmel doesn't... Um, they haven't really marketed themselves to a younger audience. So Rimmel, for me, I had always associated with older people. And I never really thought to look into their makeup. But they actually have really great things. Um, and their foundation is the best, personally. It's my favorite drugstore foundation. Um, yo, I South African YouTube is gonna have me for saying drugstore. Okay, so my next th step is concealing, well, highlighting and contouring. Which, what what else are you using if it's not LA Girl? I just want I just want you to find out. But I do want to try the Fit Me. I do want to try the Fit Me um concealers as well. But yeah, these are my faves. So I highlight in pure beige, which I do feel like is a little light if not light the undertone is not as warm as i'd like it to be but yo guys finding a highlighter shade is actually the pits like it's hard so i'm scared to go try something new but this is the one that i use i mean it's not bad but you know it's a little Which is why you see me not put a lot of foundation under my eyes. Because, I mean, I'm still coming in with this hot, hot concealer. 
so there really just isn't a need. Oh my god. Okay, so that is my highlight. And then I contour in dark cocoa. Now, this, firstly, the technique that I use has changed the game for my face. Guys, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to learn and master your face because that's what makes your makeup look the best. But anyways, so I figured out how to properly contour and really properly place the contour. And so what I do is, hmm, and then usually what I do is put it like literally right where the dent is. So here, but then I realized if I'm trying to make my face more raised, I should probably take it higher. So I see where the dent is, but I put it a little bit higher, like literally five, five millimeters higher. <laughs> so you'll see what I mean. Mm hmm. So you see my cheek hollows here, but this is a bit like slightly higher. That's what is going to raise your face. And that's what I do when I put this thing on. <clears throat> okay. And then, oh, my forehead. I mean, five head. Then I'm going to take my damp sponge and blend, baby, blend. So before I do my under eyes, I like to prepare my setting powder so that as soon as I'm done like blending it out, I can literally put the setting powder on top. Oh, let me post an Instagram picture. Sorry. <coughs> Just post it. Go like it. The powder that I use to set my under eyes is this Yardley translucent powder, but it's not actually translucent lucent. <laughs> it has like this pinky color to it. Uh, can you see? Oh my gosh, you can't see. But like it's slightly pink. That's why it says suitable for all skin tones. Because it's not the pale white one. It has some color to it. Which I think, which I think works really well with my complexion. But what I'm finna do is blend out my eye. I literally do this one eye at a time. Okay, so you're gonna see. It's like very... I just love what highlighter does to my face. So I put my brush in the powder, then I sprinkle some of it off, and then l lightly, lightly set my concealer. I don't bake because it's winter, so I'm not trying to look matte, but also because I don't need to. And this is something again that you learn when you discover what suits your face and what doesn't. For me, my concealer just looks like nonsense when I sweep off bake. Like it just, it looks very cracked and wrong. So I'd rather just apply the powder just like I did now. So that it sets my face, but I'm not actually baking. And it's not like sitting on my face for too long. Right. Because I actually do have dry skin. So I'm going to do the same thing with my other eye and that'll be that. So this is a technique that I learned from Cynthia's channel, right? So how you blend this is that you dab upwards because you're trying to lift your face. I don't know why I never thought of that. I used to sort of just blend it like this, but it makes sense because you're trying to lift your face. Ah, science. So this is what we do. It's brilliant. It looks freaking amazing. Um, I used to use powder. Um, this is the powder that I used to use. Espresso from Essence. Um, 
And the reason I don't use it is because obviously it's winter and I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to reduce the amount of powder products that I use. So in the summer, I would totally go over this and set it with this, but I could need really. What I am going to use this for though is my jawline because I don't feel like putting the concealer on my jaw. <laughs> Boring. So I'm just going to carry on blending the rest of this out. Next up, and this is the last step for my skin, is to set my whole face. How I set my whole face, well not really my whole face, but like my, my whole face. Um, this is the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the shade 350 Caramel. So I'm gonna... Hmm, hmm. And these are the areas that my makeup usually starts like cracking first um oh and then for the rest of it i just put it in the places where my my highlighting concealer and my contour concealer meet so that it's not like these two different colors looking like a i don't know what on my face do you know what i mean so it sort of brings them together. There you have her. She cute, right? I mean, I hope she cute. Yeah, she cute. <laughs> Juice break. So if you've watched my eyebrow tutorial, you'll know exactly the products that I use. That hasn't changed. Still, these three babies. Um, pencils from Essence. It's the long-lasting eye pencil in the color hot chocolate and then it's the brow gel um, from essence as well and then I got the spoolie from Mac they have them like on their makeup counters so I'm just gonna skip past the brows because I um, mean you know, I have a tutorial on that but I did just want to say you guys are probably thinking why the hell are you doing your brows after foundation listen Jackie Aina was right, but I realized that in order to be able to do this, you actually need to have your own brows naturally, because then you actually already have a shape to follow. So, I mean, I already have brows, and I'm just filling in the scarce parts of my brows, right? So that means I don't need to do too much, and I don't need to take too long with trimming my eyebrows, because I honestly used to take 50,000 million years to do them. But now it's literally like five minutes and i like that because i'd rather take longer on my skin makeup because that is honestly what's most important for me and i don't need to take long on my brows because they naturally look good and people always ask me well how do you hide the concealer after you've done your brows after the foundation and if you know me you'll know that i usually do my eyebrow concealer with either my foundation shade or my actual foundation so my foundation shade and concealer form is fawn from la girl but i'm just gonna use my foundation because it's already out so if not why not now it's brow gel time actually i'm gonna put my first layer of mascara because i usually do like two layers of mascara three if i'm feeling wild um so firstly i have mascara and then while that dries i'll be doing my brow gel okay so now brow gel so again if you have brows you can do brows after foundation if you don't have brows use my eyebrow tutorial to do your brows before foundation i'm on the hunt for a liquid highlighter or not liquid but like maybe like a stick highlighter so if anyone knows of any good drugstore affordable one please let me know because i feel like the powder ones are just too much for me and the type of makeup that i do the one that i do use is from this basic bitch palette from mac i literally i've been using this since i got it 
to be honest it's literally in every makeup video of mine so what i do is i'll put the brush then i'll like tap some of it away <laughs> then i literally put the slightest amount and then blend the rest of it with my finger yep that's enough You can literally feel the point that you're supposed to put your highlighter. It's literally that bone that sticks out. Like that's the one. That's where you're supposed to put your highlighter. Okay. Then same thing on the other side. I care about my nose highlights a lot. And then this one. Amazing. Okay. Now it's time for my second layer of mascara. That's literally my whole face done. So I'm going to set it now. And my current favorite spray is the Dewy Finish um, Setting Spray from NYX. It is fantastic. My makeup looks glossy AF. And you don't see the effect straight away because obviously you're still wet and your powders are still fresh on your face but literally like once i've lived in my makeup it looks amazing it's like an intentional lived in look do you know what i mean so they also have like another type like for matte skin but for matte skin i prefer mac like mac or nothing for the matte look so what i usually do is i'll take a wet earbud and remove like the powders and any other makeup that may have gotten onto my lips like most of the time i'll just put this on <laughs> or the pink one so i've put a bit of vaseline on because i actually do want a bit of nourishment under my lips you know some healing power um but what i have been using to get like the pigment out is these revlon chubby stick well, okay actually don't think they're called chubby sticks um balm stain they're called balm stains right this is other one that my mom has it's like a different kind of pink it's so good um i'll probably show you guys on my instagram or something but this one also really works it just brings out the pink of my um uh, lips but it works really well under the vaseline i mean it works really well Putting them on top of the Vaseline helps dilute the color even more. I mean, they're not that pigmented, but I still want a more natural looking lip than uh, you have something on your lips type of look. So it gives off like, it, it just improves the natural color of my lip. You know what I mean? Like it evens it out and it looks good. So that's what I've been using. And that is it. That is how I do my makeups, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. Look at that face. Can you see what that setting spray is doing to me right now? I'm sick. I am sick. Okay, so now I'm gonna straighten my hair. And while I do that, I'll give you a little info. Okay, my favorite people on the internet. Um, <laughs> so this hair is from One More Hair. I will link it in the description box. I think this is 28, if not 26. The thing is, for me personally, I can't tell the difference um, because I'm short. So even a 26 will look like a 28 on me. Um, but yeah, this is like one of those two, but it'll be in the description box. And I've had this wig for, since December actually. It holds it straight in very well, but the closure tends to lose the straightness quicker than um the bundles which is usually the case anyways um so that's the only reason i end up having to run my straightener in it um and also it's been sitting like on top of my suitcase so it look it it needs like the reviving but the only time i ever give it a full full straighten is after it's been washed because it never needs like the track by track type of straighten if i've straightened it properly the first time after a good wash it's really really super super silky guys it literally yo it's really good hair and i hardly put any product in this i don't know what else to tell you guys it's really good quality hair and i definitely do recommend them they were introduced to me by 
so i don't know if it's like the sister company or what to it but yeah that's how i got to know about this hair company these websites usually have a lot of um well not a lot of but they frequently have these like discount things like if you spend more than you get this amount off so if you just stay alert and look on their pages you'll probably find those specials on on really cheap hair already fairly um so yeah definitely worth the cop and another thing that someone has asked me is how i get my wigs to be this flat and that ladies and gentlemen is the work of plucking you just gotta pluck it here so that it lays flat flat and then on the sides and all of that i tend to use I don't double weft my wigs generally if you've watched my any of my wig making videos so that helps keep it flat but also especially on the sides i know that i always tell you guys to not cut after every row but when you get here you should cut because what the fold over method will do is i give you it's folded over so you'll see the sort of a bump here so what you want to do is you do the fold over method while you're sewing and then afterwards you sort of cut it so that it lays flat flat and that is how my wigs look like they're coming on my scalp and then this flyaway tamer is from my first wigs i literally get it every time i get a wig from there so that's where i got it from <laughs> for people that have been wondering and yeah guys so all the details for this hair will be in the description box i definitely do recommend it so that is it you guys this is real this is me i'm exactly where i'm supposed to be um gotta let the lights shine on me <laughs> wait let me zoom out so that you guys can see my full slate okay okay i hope this video was helpful to you guys makeup wise and also just helped with the people who are always wondering what hair i'm wearing if there's anything you take from this it's learn how to do your face master your face and then you'll have people asking you how you do your makeup every single day <laughs> um yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed the makeup portion. I hope that the hair portion was also helpful to my gals who've been asking me what hair I'm always wearing. And that is all. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you very much for watching and I love you all so, so much. Mwah.